Oh, wow. Who would have thought supply management would get a lively debate like that? All right, let's reality check this with someone who has political sensibilities, but who took a long, dispassionate look at supply management and concluded, well, it's time to call it quits. Martha Hall Finlay is president of the Canadian Canada West Foundation and joins me from Toronto. Well, Martha. Well done. <laughs> I guess I'd like, to, <laughs> I'd like to first get your thoughts, though. Is Donald Trump right that Wisconsin farmers are being hit by, because of Canada? And is Maxine Bernier right that it's time to call the system down? Well, first off, the, the tr what's happening with Trump, there are two, act two issues. One is this whole ultra-filtered milk challenge that has come up in the last couple of years. That's a very specific trade issue, but it is a symptom of supply management. And the second question, yes. And actually, I'm a former liberal. Max Bernier is uh, the only one of the bunch who is being intellectually honest on this file. This, this is actually, Donald Trump's given us a huge opportunity to do something that is win-win. We can actually make a change to a system that was started 50 years ago. It has become completely uh, distorting now. It's, it's all of the things that, that we can talk about, about high consumer prices. I have to laugh about, you know, Stephen Blaney. Okay, Stephen, if the prices aren't a lot lower in the United States, if they're the same, let's get rid of the 250, 300% tariff. I mean, it, 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 it's ludicrous to think that the prices are not different. The Americans do subsidize somewhat, but nothing nearly as much as what we do for supply management. We can move forward. We can do this in a way that compensates farmers appropriately. It's not the disaster that Stephen was talking about. We've made, we've proposed how to, how to do this and what the formulas would look like. But you know, it is a system and most people don't know it. This is a system that hurts the poor and rewards the wealthy. We now only have 11,000 dairy farmers. We used to have 145,000. The average dairy right. farmer is a millionaire, right? And you have, on the other hand, when he talks about protecting consumers, you have a mother, okay? A young mother, three little kids on welfare, and she is forced by our system to pay two and three times more for basic essential nutrition for her kids, and that money is going to what is now a small number of millionaires. It makes no what? sense. Is, I mean, I'm trying to, I've seen a lot of conflicting reports on this. Is Australia a success in, in getting out of supply management or a failure or a bit of both? Australia was a success in getting rid of supply management. Australia and New Zealand had a different system, but they both decided 15, 20 years ago that to participate in a global market, they needed to get rid of subsidization internally for all sorts of industries, not just dairy. Um, the way they did it was actually a really smart way that, that compensated farmers uh, appropriately and over some time so that it was, in fact, affordable. The challenge that Australia has had, and we, I hear this all the time, there have been other challenges to the agricultural industry in Australia. This was followed on pretty quickly by a couple of years of drought. Then they had, interestingly enough, really low prices because consumer prices were being fought over with loss leaders on milk with the, 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 the two main grocery chains. Our Competition Act would not actually allow stuff like that to happen, so it's a little mm -hmm. bit different. So there are an awful lot of differences between us and Australia, and, and, I, and I get really frustrated because people point to, well, this was a problem and this was a problem. Every industry has problems. Every industry has ways to deal with them. That's, it's a really misleading thing to say to, to use Australia. Well, I'm almost out of time, Martha, but I, I quickly want to get your thoughts. Like, we wave our magic wand and supply management goes away as per Trump's wishes um, and, and good economic sense in your argument. What's the industry look like? How does it change? What, how quickly do things fall apart or come together, depending how you look at it? Well, well, two things. The first answer to that is look at what we did with the wine industry. And you and I are old enough. We can remember. Remember before the free trade discussions <laughs> with the United States, the wine industry was just, oh, my God, gnashing of teeth, wringing of hands. We can't compete. The climate's right. Sure enough, a little bit of government help. I mean, remember, how good was baby duck, right? Um, uh, look yikes. at our <laughs> Exactly. But look at our wine industry now. So all of the same arguments were being used. And we now have a flourishing wine industry. The other point, we can't not mention this, Don, is that it is clearly an issue for Donald Trump. He has this in his sights. This has always been a challenge for us in terms of leverage at the negotiating table of international trade agreements. 
This is clearly a big deal for the states. We can't go to Donald Trump and say, no, we don't want a border tax. No, we, we don't agree with Buy American, High American. We right. are worried about softwood lumber. And yet we have its hypocrisy to be able to say, oh, we want all of those doors open. But by the way, we're going to still protect dairy. I got you. All right. Martha Hall Finley, always a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, always a pleasure to join you.